How much do you earn in Australia when you're 16? I don't know, Zloty, but it wasn't good. It wasn't I, I, uh, not maybe, enough to live by yourself? No, 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 no. I live with my family until now. So this okay. is my first time living by myself, uh, paying rent. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is another thing. Uh, maybe in euros is better. I probably earn about 12,000 euros. Yeah, there was a, a few tears uh, from my mum when I, when I left, but uh, tears of happiness because... When I was younger, I, I always wanted to, to move overseas and, and play in Europe, so she understood uh, why I was going, and uh, and yeah, she's she's very happy for me. Everyone from my family is, is very happy. Training, I'm learning different words every day. Some words I, I cannot say on, on a microphone, but... Uh, yeah, you can. You're, we're here on YouTube. Nah, it's cool. you know. <laughs> football is everything to me. My mum and dad actually met at the football game. I have the pleasure to host Luis Diarigo. Is that the yeah, right way to correct. pronounce it? This is correct. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. How, how do you feel here and I mean in Poland and Gdańsk? Because that's your first big trip abroad. It, it must be quite a challenge for you. Yeah, it's my uh, first time moving from Australia. I've been a professional footballer since I've been uh, the age of 16. Now I've just turned 22. Uh, moving here, it's of course a, a big challenge, and you think about, oh, is this is this the right move? But uh, I was a hundred percent with it mm -hmm. from uh, from when I signed. And uh, Gdansk is uh, this is right, Gdansk or Gdansk? Gdansk. Gdansk. This is a uh, yeah. It's been really good. I've been here just over over three weeks now, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you look at pictures when you first sign of uh, of the city, but it's uh, a lot more beautiful when you see it in person. Mm -hmm. You said you you're professional football player since you were 16. That's when you signed your first contract? Yes. How much do you earn in Australia when you're 16? I don't know, Zloty, but it wasn't good. It wasn't? I, I, uh, not maybe, enough to live by yourself? No, 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 no. I live with my family until now. So this okay. is my first time living by myself, uh, paying rent. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is another thing. Uh, maybe in euros is better. I probably earn about 12,000 euros. Mm -hmm. But Australian, I earn... 18,000 a year, mm -hmm. per year. But yeah. Around this, yeah, I don't okay. know what it is in Zloty, like I said, but around this, yeah. But okay. uh, I signed a, a pro youth. So uh, every year I had a pro youth for, it's called a scholarship in Australia. I signed for, I think it was three years. So my first two, three seasons, it goes up by, by the age. So it, it doesn't go up a lot, but it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's good enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you said you were living with your family. Mm -hmm. So what did your parents told you when you told them that you want to uh, not only change the club, not only change the city, not only change the country, but actually move to the other side of the world? Yeah, they were very happy for me uh, from a young age. They know. Really? I was, your, yeah. your mother said, all right, Luis, go see you, see you yeah. next year, see you on Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, there was a, a few tears uh, from my mom when I, when I left, but uh, tears of happiness because... When I was younger, I, I always wanted to, to move overseas and, and play in Europe. So she understood uh, why I was going. And, uh, and yeah, she's, she's very happy for me. Everyone from my family is, is very happy. Not sure about the, the time difference, but uh, no, nah, it's, it's been really good. Mm -hmm. It's been a good start here. Mm -hmm. And when, they, when you told them, I want to uh, choose the, the, Pol the Polish option, did they ask... What option? Or like, where is this? Yeah. D did you know anything about Poland before it came up? To be honest, I didn't know a lot about... I knew I knew Poland as a country, but I didn't know much about football. I have a close friend of mine that uh, played in Poland the last two years. Mm -hmm. and, Who's that? Uh, uh, Jordan Courtney Perkins. Mm -hmm. He played at uh, Rakov. And uh, I gave him a, a message. He's in my national team. And I said, hey, uh, talk to me about this uh, this special club. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, top three in extra class. Are. Unfortunately, they went down to, to the one Liga. And, uh, but it's a big club and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll fight for, I'm sure they will fight for, for promotion. So mm -hmm. this is the, a bit of the background of it. But uh, my mum and dad, my family, my two brothers, everyone, my girlfriend, uh, they all just said to me, Wherever you go, we'll be happy. So you choose your path and, and we'll follow it, yeah. Mm -hmm. You said uh, he played in Rakov. Let's try the other part of the name of this club, Częstochowa. What was that? Can you repeat again? <laughs> Częstochowa. 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 Yes. How is it going with, with you learning Polish? Because that's, that's what, I, uh, what I wanted to, to begin with. 
Yeah, it's a. Uh, I, I tried right? to to read words, pronounce words. It's at the start. Well, now still the start. It's 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 hard. It's mm-hmm. hard to to learn and to pick up words. But uh, at training, I'm learning different words every day. Some words I I cannot say on on microphone. But uh, yeah, you can. You re- we're here on YouTube. Ah, uh, no, nah, it's. Homage, you know. <laughs> nah, uh, I'm learning every day. I'm trying to listen to to the coach and coaches and players in training. But um, I'm very fortunate um, that uh, everyone speaks English. This mm-hmm. was um, the thing in the back of my mind when I first signed here. Uh, how was the the English at the club? Mm-hmm. And uh, I said to my agents, I I want to have a phone call with the coach. I want to see if I can have a proper conversation with the coach. And he said, no worries, we'll set this up. And uh, I call the coach and his English is is fine. He speaks great English. Um, all the coaches, there are three other assistant coaches, they all speak English and uh, all the players speak English. So um, this is something I'm very grateful for. Um, my first away trip, it was uh, after the first day I arrived here and uh, we go into the meeting room and I walk in and uh, one of the coaches say, hey, foreigners on this side? Polish people on this side. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe this guy is just joking around. But he said, no, no, serious, serious. Mm -hmm. And I sit on the right side and the Polish player is on the left side. And the coach starts speaking in Polish. And I'm like, oh, I do not understand what he's saying. And the um, goalkeeper coach behind is saying exactly what the coach is saying in English. Right. So he mixes it and changes it between English and Polish. So I understand I understand everything what's okay. going on yeah so because this was a, a surprise to me like in uh, my whole life i've been in australia i just i know english so but now hearing what the coach is saying in polish and then i have someone behind me in my ear saying and understanding mm-hmm. it in, in english because when you started the story and said polish people on this side of the bus and the other some on this side it, it sounded really bad actually yeah you know, like. yeah, yeah yeah i didn't understand this but then when the coach started speaking and then I look behind and uh, he's he's speaking English I, I understand everything like the the videos how we are lining up in the in the game what we are trying to do in, in today's game to beat the opponent I understood everything so mm-hmm. yeah it's top I get the feeling that you're uh, the type of the yes man as as we can say you know like when you get the challenge you say okay let, let's try let's let's uh, go tank what can I do because I think if if someone Uh, got me an offer to go to the other side of the world to yeah. leave my family, leave my yeah. uh, my. You, you said about your girlfriend yeah. I, to, to leave her yeah. and and go alone. I think I might be uh, maybe might be scared, might be afraid. Yeah, weren't I w- you? I was scared. I was afraid at first. I think to myself, no. To be honest with you, I think this. I say to my agent, I I don't feel comfortable to because when I see myself. I didn't want to go to Poland. I I saw myself going to another country or this country. I didn't think of myself or picture myself going to Poland. Mm-hmm. But And what did you picture yourself in like English lower divisions or I something I saw like myself that? like my dream is to play in Italy. Mm-hmm. I see myself going to a to an Italian side, second division. Uh I like a lot of my my agent says to me, "Oh, you look like uh, you could play in the the Dutch second division or Belgium might suit this leagues, you know? And I'm thinking to myself the the whole season, not not season, my whole, you know, last couple of years, these are the places I want to go to. But then my agent gives me a call, hey, this team is interested in you. I think to myself, no, this is the honest truth. Mm-hmm. And then I have a Zoom call with the club. With and, who? Uh, the technical director, the president. And then I have, when the f- conversations went further, I had it with the coach as well to introduce myself. And uh, yeah, they sent me a, a video of uh, Gdansk. Mm-hmm. So was it you that was trying to convince convince uh, them to yourself, or was it them uh, it trying was more, to convo- convince it was both. you? It was, both. it was both. My agent said to me, "You know, this is your decision. I'm not pushing you." And I said to myself, "Okay, no worries. Like it's my decision at the end of the day." Mm-hmm. But then I have um, <clears throat> further chats with the club. They send me a, a five minute video of the city. Um, at this point, I didn't realize how big of a club Lechia Gdansk was. They sent me a, a video of the training base, the stadium, the fans, and then I thought to myself, "Wow, this is this is a big club. Mm-hmm. If we can, you know, come here and fight for promotion and go back to the extra classa, this is this would be an amazing achievement." Mm-hmm. So then I agreed terms and, and signed the contract while I was on international duty. But the training center that could not be impressive for you. The training center? Yeah. 
Oh, it's it's top. It's like a mini stadium. Ah, come it's on. It's good, beautiful. You you have to change your clothes on the on the stadium, then go a few miles away to to train. In yeah, the, uh, well, I get to the stadium. There is the gym there, everything, uh, the kit room, yeah, physio, the change room. I get changed, and then we take a five ten minute bus to the to the training center. Mm-hmm. So I go in the gym. I do my rehab, my prehab. <coughs> excuse me. And then yeah, we go on the bus. And then we go to training, so we have extra warm up, and no, nah, I, f- I feel fine. I'm young, so I'm suitable okay. to, to anything. So I mean, that's fine, that's okay, but it's not, that's not the top level, in my opinion. Ah, that's that's your opinion. No worries. Okay. I do this with the national team. Mm-hmm. I know the all the soccerers do this as well. They get to the hotel, they bus it to the to the training center, they bus it to the game. So it's normal. So, okay, yeah, for me, it's different. But I have to uh, mm-hmm. adjust to it. And, mm-hmm. yeah, What kind fine. of a football player are you? Because we've read about you that you're like number eight box-to-box midfielder, yes, would you say? Yes, I like to... When I first started my career, I was a number six. Mm-hmm. I had two very good number tens in front of me. And my job was to win the ball back, give the ball to them. Mm-hmm. And this was my job. Clear and then, the mess and just... Yeah, I try, try to ball. clean the mess and then give them the ball. And then try to defend as much as possible. But then... Um, the new coach came in and uh, I had him when I was younger and he said to me, you are, you will be playing number eight, box to box midfielder, get in the box, try and score, try and make chances and try and defend our box as well. So I'm trying to run for, for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, yeah, I see myself as a box to box midfielder. I'm trying to to score as many goals as possible, trying to get in the box and make chances, try and get an assist. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, because that's that that might be quite a challenge when you change uh, position from like a typical number six to the typical number eight. Between. Yeah, I've had a I've had a lot of time now to adjust to it. I was eighteen when I was playing number six, seventeen when I was playing number six, and then I've had from you know nineteen to twenty two to to play number eight as many games as possible and to to learn to make chances and and mm-hmm. you know be a dynamic number eight. Mm-hmm. Were you like a golden boy in your country, in your team? Uh, no, I wouldn't say this. No, no, no. Because when you're so young and when you start being 16 and you play, you said, 100 games in your as as the youngest player in history to play. Yeah, I was the youngest player for, for my club to play 100 club. games, yeah. Still, that, yeah. That's, that's a big achievement. Yeah. So, big talent or not? Uh, no, no. I, uh, I played for... For my team, which I still support now, um, I went to the games with my family from a young age and I said to myself, this is my dream to, to play for my hometown team and I'm grateful enough to play 100 games for mm-hmm. the club, yeah. And what does football mean for you? Because for a lot of guys, it's the way to to get a better life, actually, you know? They start low, they go high, they yeah. have money, they they have good life. What's in it for you? Football is everything to me. How did it start it? That's what was that? Sorry. How did it start it? That uh, today is everything for you. Is it like some someone from your family uh, that gave it for you, to yeah, you? Yeah, my family, my my mom and dad's side. My mom and dad actually met at the football game. All right, as fans, as fans. Yeah, they were watching a game, and uh, they met. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how the story is, but they met at a football game. So football has been in my life from my mom and dad's side. Um, so from a young age, my dad was, and my mom gave me the passion to to play football. From my dad's side, we are Italian background, and uh, yeah, football is everything in Italy. And uh, my mom's side, it was more my mom's uh, grandfather. He uh, was a was in a how do I say it? He was like the kit man at a club, mm-hmm. but uh, for forty years. So uh, he was there. Your grandfather? Or My grandfather was at a club in Australia for 40 mm-hmm. years. He didn't get paid. He didn't take any salary. He was there for the love. He was doing washing clothes. He was picking up the bottles after the games. He was there if anyone needed to, he needed any help. He was always there. So from my mum and dad's side, my brothers, everyone, they gave me the love to, to play football. Mm-hmm. So that sounds like a true love in, yeah. in the family. Your brothers play mm-hmm. as well? Yeah, my brothers play. My older brother... Um, played a little bit more when he was younger now he's into his studies and work and uh, my little brother he's um 17 and uh, i think he will be a, a really good footballer mm-hmm. what uh, position uh, same as me right. same as me so you can Big see competition between yeah you. yeah um 
you could see uh, even from from a young age or my older brother younger brother we're always playing in the backyard there's always fights and this is where the the winning mentality comes from i try and bring this into into training every day and and of course game day as well mm -hmm. about your mentality what are you willing to achieve because i've heard um, kasper urbanski here the same seat and he is like 19 years old playing in uh, bologna mostly in Primavera, but uh, some minutes as well in in the first team, and he said, "I want to win World Cup. I want to win uh, Euro Championship. I want to win everything, even if now I'm not in even in in the first squad in Bologna." Uh, what are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming to have a a very good season because uh, I have something very important next year: uh, the Olympics in France. Um, this is my dream. This is my goal to to play in the Olympics. Um, for my country, but uh, also to to play for the Socceroos, you know. If I uh, if the team gets promoted to the extra class, I have a big chance to to hopefully make the Socceroos and hopefully get looked at more into the Socceroos. But this is my dream to play for the Socceroos and to play as many games as possible for them. So step by step, not, step by not, step, not dreaming about like something that will happen in ten years, more like this season, next season. Um, just little little goals, I think, is the is the right way to go. And then this is how you achieve the big goals. You can't just go from here to there. I feel like you have to go small steps to to get your big goal. Okay, so let's hope we see you in Paris, uh, still as as a Lechia player, because that would be yeah. that would be quite something. Of course, for the I'll club. be a Lechia player by then. Yeah. Okay, Luis Diarigo, thank you very much. Thank you very much.